This is chapter 13, part 2. We just concluded talking about sucrose to help um, assess in numbing of the newborn site. We're going to talk about the heel stick um, procedure next. Um, Microtainer collection collect only the smallest amount of blood so that it, the effects of blood volume reduction are minimal. Overcollecting during phlebotomy can require a packed cell transfusion in an infant. To avoid overcollection, we require the amount of the blood collected from an infant and small child. The one thing to take note of is that there's a particular volume to weight. So that's something we have to calculate. Because if we remember from chapter 7, a 9-pound ba baby has about an equivalence to a 12-ounce can of soda in volume. So we want to make sure not to overcollect. The collection, the heel is the most desirable site for skin puncture of an infant or neonate, and we'll use a medial lateral planter surface as shown here. We want to avoid the arch and the curvature of the heel, and then we'd use a quick heeled lancet is the preferred method to collect. This can be done through neonatal screening or the PKU. Neonatal screening is important for the early detection, diagnosis, and treatment of certain genetic, metabolic, and infectious diseases. A blood spot testing for screening is preferred before the newborn is 72 hours old. We collect each drop in the circle, filling it full, and we let it dry for at least 24 to 48 hours. We do not allow the filter paper to come in contact with substances such as alcohol, formula, water, powder, antiseptic solutions, or lotions. We do not touch the incision site or allow the heel to come in contact with any non-sterile items or surfaces. Once the puncture is made, we're going to wipe off that first drop with sterile gauze, allow another large drop to form, and lightly touch the printed side of the filter paper with the blood drop and fill each printed circle. The dry spots on a, we're going to dry spots on a clean, dry, flat surface for a minimum of four hours and send to the lab within 24. Sometimes it takes longer than four hours depending upon how saturated it is. Unfortunately, the video I have for PKU, um, does not work at this time, but I will provide a video on that procedure on Blackboard. A finger stick is usually preferable for a child older than one. Maybe necessary for a child is damaged veins from a repeated venipuncture. And it's the same procedure as we would collect for an adult. However, there's different depths. For a child, we want to make sure that we have the smallest amount of depth. And when we do a heel stick, it's less than 2.0. Scalp vein collection. Scalp veins may be used on infants with, when access to other veins is difficult or undesirable. This is performed by nursing staff. A 23 gauge safety butterfly needle is used and we position the needle at a 15 degree or less angle over the vein as shown here. Sometimes in a baby this is easy because then they won't try to pull at it either. So just another procedure that we like to show. Um, in case of a child who might have what's called club feet, for infants with foot deformities, such as club foot, it may be difficult to perform a phlebotomy procedure due to twisted inward and downward positioning of the club foot and associated with poor circulation. To perform a heel um, warming of the foot prior to heel stick, and it just requires very gentle touch. It still can be done, but we got to realize with this type of deformity that our positioning of our hand is going to be very different and we need to be gentle because obviously this is not something that's going to go back to its normal position on its own. Okay, venipuncture procedure, um, special equipment. Um, we can use assistive devices such as um, near-infrared lights, um, infrared light highlights hemoglobin and the ultrasound sends high frequency sound waves through various depths of the skin and then gives us kind of a guide here as to where those veins might be. And on a child, um, this might be preferable even on a harder to stick patient. This would also be useful as well. Some key things to remember with our pediatric patients is obviously being very patient with them. Um, trying to explain to the procedure to the level that they'd understand. Also, positioning yourself at eye level is really crucial. Um, although we don't get a lot of pediatric um, practice in class, we give you a lot of tips. Um, you also get to observe it once eventually you attend clinicals. We're going to move on to our geriatric patients. The other thing as you do your reading for chapter 13, please don't neglect the clinical alerts. Those are really important. 
The geriatric population uses about 31% of the nation's health care services, and by 2025, the elderly population will have reached over 20% of the total U.S. population. The increase in point-of-care testing in homes, nursing homes, and other long-term care facilities are on an increase. Some conditions we need to be aware of. Elderly physical conditions such as arthritis, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, hearing loss, failing eyesight, loss of taste, smell, and feeling, memory loss, increased susceptibility to accidental hypothermia. All these could impact how we approach our patient and how we take care of them. So as we look at the different anatomy, um, the loss of muscle mass could make it very difficult for us when we go to anchor a patient's arm. And what I mean by anchoring is we have to secure the vein because the muscle mass is no longer holding the vein still. Um, hearing and vision loss could impact the patient's ability to read a label, tell us who they are. The other thing to be aware of, too, is that um, when we start looking at patients who have difficulty focusing um, and diminished eyesight, we also got to be aware of the fact that it might take us extra time to ID them correctly. Um, again, the patient's skin could be very frail, paper-like in um, consistency, so they might bruise very easily as well. And as we see here, the difference between the um, layers of the skin, fat, and muscle as seen from a younger patient to an older patient. Emotional loss of career, spouse, close friends, or relatives, it can be reflected by depression or anger at life in general. A lot of these patients, you've got to remember, um, this kind of goes near and dear to my heart. When I started in the field as a phlebotomist, I worked with nursing home patients, and a lot of them, that sense of independence is gone. They can no longer drive for themselves. They can't take care of themselves. They have people helping take care of them. So you've got to be really patient and understanding. Um, for some, that loss of a career um, and that sense of independence kind of being taken away makes it very hard for them to handle. Um, and then they're in a new setting where they might be unfamiliar with people or have no visitors. Kind of um, is interesting because if we think about it now with us being in the circumstances we are, we can't have any visitors. So think about um, how an elderly patient might feel in a nursing home when no family shows up. Um, so it, it can really cause an emotional strain and they might take stuff out on you being that that might be the only person they see and we just can't take it personally. Um, when we go to draw these patients, we have to take care in bringing extra supplies and equipment needed, positively identify the patient. So if the patient's unable to identify themselves, they generally will have a wristband and then we have to use that and also have the nurse verify and please don't let them just be like, well, it's the old lady with the pink sweater in the corner. Um, how many grandmas wear a pink sweater? Um, we have to positively ID them correctly. Um, special positioning of the patient for venipuncture, they might be confined to a wheelchair. So the use of this clip could allow us to assist them. We're going to probably discard all trash and use supplies. Label the specimens and place them in a leak-proof container with biohazard sign. And check the appropriate temperatures for transport. And use security precautions and document delayed specimens. Um, this chair in particular is really essential because it allows us as phlebotomists to have access to everything we need. Um, and we might have our work bag and there's a like tray over here. Um, the other thing to be aware of is we might have patients that are in what's called a restricted position so they can't extend out their arms. So being mindful of that when we're taking care of our patients that we know their limitations. Um, the other thing too, when we talk about loss of taste, smell, and feel, the loss of feeling is really essential because they may not be able to tell us when something hurts. So you kind of got to look at their nonverbal, um, which is really crucial because if we end up hitting an artery or nerve, the patient may not react. When handling patients with Parkinson's disease that comes along with a tremor, trying to assist them in finding a way to hold their arms still, whether it's getting another fellow technician to help you. Um, I myself worked with patients with Parkinson's a lot, and when they were in a hospital bed, if you have them um, gently hold on to the bed rail, it slows down the tremor, allowing you to draw their blood safely. 
Um, and being aware that those patients with Alzheimer's that don't remember certain things, you could have seen them an hour ago and they may not know who you are now. Just being really patient with them is really, really crucial. Some key things from chapter 13's text that I did not highlight in this PowerPoint presentation that are helpful to review. Table 13 slash 1, which talks about age-specific care conditions and um, competencies, will help you provide a safe, comfortable environment, communication, and understand patients' behavior, which is something when we work with our pediatric patients is essential. Um, the other thing that I did not cover that we need to make sure that we all review is the procedure 13 slash 1 heel stick procedure and the clinical alerts on page 432. The heel stick procedure will go through exactly how we collect it. Um, I will have a video on it as well. The other thing that I would like students to go over is um, procedure 13 slash 3, the collection of capillary blood for neonatal screening. Again, I'll post a video so you can kind of see what this looks like so that you can reference to it. Um, your book goes over the collection procedure 13 slash 5, collection for CVC and um, when they have a um, saline lock or pick line, it's just something more so an FYI to review. We don't handle collection from these, but we need to be aware of those if we see them on a patient. The last thing that I think is a great reference for students um, when looking at this chapter is just really reviewing the highlighted sections as well as the study questions in the back of the book. Um, being that we're outside of the classroom, this will really help you prepare for the test as well. Again, I will have videos with the heel stick procedure, also on um, the PKU procedure, so you can reference those procedures on Blackboard and understand um, the process since we won't actually be performing those in class. This concludes Chapter 13, Part 2. Please, everyone, be safe during this time. And I will be recording the other PowerPoints for students to view in the following weeks.